lovely Scott County Public Library in Kentucky. And here's another episode of Bookends. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite genres, which are called cozy mysteries. And I like to call them whodunits. But what makes a cozy mystery? Well, you need three ingredients to make a cozy mystery, according to what I've researched. Uh, you need an amateur sleuth, uh, somebody that can uh, come into contact with a lot of different members of the community, um, and you need a small, intimate community for them to interact with all the different players in uh, the mystery, and you need little or no sex or violence. Uh, any violence, obviously there's going to be a murder in most of these cozy mysteries, uh, but that murder usually takes place uh, outside of what you're reading, and it usually happens to somebody that most people would say, hmm, you know, we probably didn't really like that person anyway, <laughs> so um, most, most of the time when you're reading these, these mysteries, you're thinking, maybe if, if you had to bump somebody off, that probably would have been the one that you've been rooting for to vote off the aisle. So anyways, where did our cozy mystery start? Well, I'll tell you. In 1927, Agatha Christie created a character called uh, Miss Marple, and she first appeared in uh, 1927 in some short stories that Agatha Christie wrote. But her first full-length novel was The Murder at the Vicarage, and we have it here. So if you want to start at the very beginning with the, the very first, what is considered um, cozy mystery, we've got it, The Murder at the Vicarage. That's Miss Marple's first novel. I've chosen a whole bunch of different uh, cozy mysteries to tell you about. And the first one I'm going to describe to you is another one uh, by Agatha Christie called A Caribbean Mystery. And this is also uh, Miss Marple. Uh, while she's on holiday in the Caribbean, the elderly amateur sleuth, Miss Marple, meets a retired British military man who tells her a secret he's been carrying with him for decades providing a clue to a decades-old series of murders. Before he can show her this clue, though, he winds up dead. Can Miss Marple solve this new crime, as well as resolve the mystery surrounding the deaths that occurred many years ago? You'll have to read it to find out, and we've got it at the library. These are also, uh, usually, uh, most of these are gonna be available on eBooks as well, especially the Agatha Christie ones. You can get all of those on eBooks. Uh, through Hoopla or whatever your favorite app is uh, with the Scott County Public Library. Our next book is called The ABC Murders by Agatha Christie. And this one stars uh, one of her other most famous uh, characters called Hercule Poirot, who is a great detective. He likes to use his little, green, or little gray cells. And this challenging case in The ABC Murders pits the great Belgian detective, Hercule Poirot, against a serial killer who sends the detectives taunting messages with cryptic clues before each murder. And uh, this was one of the cases that brought Poirot out of retirement. So um, I highly recommend it. Check it out here at the Scott County Public Library. Now, this one I just loved. I just finished reading this one. It's called Wicked Autumn by G.M. Malliott. And this one uh, has a, a kind of a little bit unusual twist in that the amateur sleuth is a, a man instead of a woman. Uh, his name is Max Tudor, and he is the vicar of St. Edward's Parish in the village of Nether Monkslip. But he's also a former MI5 agent. So that's kind of interesting. He uses those skills a little bit when he's trying to find out who the murderer is. But he finds himself in the middle of a murder mystery in his tiny little village when the Women's Institute leader, not a very nice person, is murdered during the local harvest fair. Almost literally everyone in the village had a motive to murder this woman, as she was universally disliked. But Max wants to find justice, and he joins forces with a local chief detective inspector to get to the bottom of the crime and bring the perpetrator or perpetrators to justice. So, Wicked Autumn by G.M. Malliot. Check it out today. Now, the rest of these 
are all new releases. So I haven't had a chance to go through all of them yet, but they all look really good to me. So I'll tell you a little bit about each one and you can decide whether or not it's something you want to check out. We've got The Book of Candlelight by Ellery Adams. Uh, Miracle Springs, North Carolina is the setting for this murder mystery and Nora Pennington runs an independent bookstore which is another great setting for these cozy mysteries. It's usually a, an amateur woman sleuth who has uh, a bookstore or maybe she's uh, running a tea shop or maybe she um, works in the local hospital somewhere where she's going to come into contact with a lot of different people. But anyway, she's running an independent bookstore in this small town, and a local potter's body has been found floating in the river, and it looks like murder. So Nora joins with her friends in the Secret Book and Stone Society to solve the crime. It might just have something to do with a centuries-old diary found in a local inn. So it's got an old secret and lots of eccentric characters, so check this one out, The Book of Candlelight by Ellery Adams. And our next whodunit here is Mrs. Jeffries Demands Justice by Emily Brightwell. This is the latest in a long, long, long stream of uh, books about Mrs. Jeffries. So you've got a lot more to read uh, if you like this book. In the latest Mrs. Jeffries novel right here, the Victorian era backstage detective and housekeeper continues to use her uncanny detective skills to help her employer, Scotland Yard's Inspector Witherspoon, solve even the most unfathomable crimes. So she's the real hero of the story. He's the inspector, but she gives him the information that he needs to solve the crime. So she's kind of like a, a backseat driver here. Here she's taxed with, tasked with finding the true killer when Inspector Nigel Nivens who is no friend to either Mrs. Jeffries or her employer is framed for murder. Can she solve the case? I'm betting she can. But check out this, this book, Mrs. Jeffries Demands Justice by Emily Brightwell. Now we've got Egg Shooters by Laura Childs. In this one, a masked gunman robs the local hospital, shooting two people and escaping with a bag full of drugs. Suzanne Dietz, co-owner of the Cackleberry Club Cafe, witnesses the event and is determined to track the killer down. Was the hospital theft an inside job, or was the killer involved with a group of survivalists camped outside of town? It will take all of Suzanne's small town friends and the local sheriff to help her solve the case. So check it out, Egg Shooters by Laura Childs. Next we've got The Sign of Death by Callie Hunt. If you like historical mysteries, this little cozy mystery might be up your alley. Lord William Weathington's estate manager, James Harding, is found dead shortly after some of his nefarious dealings had been brought to light in this novel set in Bath, England in the 1890s. Sir William recruits Lady Amy Lovell, a fellow member of the Mystery Book Club of Bath, and she's uh, a closet mystery author herself. She has to write her books under a pseudonym because back in the 1890s, women could not be authors, uh, especially not of mystery novels of the type that she writes. So she's got a um, really good mind, and she has to kind of hide it. But uh, Sir William recruits Lady Amy Lowell to help him figure out who killed Mr. Harding. Every one of his clients had good reason to want to murder the man, and the police seem to think that Sir William is a prime suspect. So she's got to help him escape the gallows. So check this one out, The Sign of Death by Callie Hunt. Then we've got another new release called Irish Parade Murder by Leslie Meyer. Lucy Stone has a new rival for the top reporter gig in her local town's newspaper, and she's unhappy about it. During the St. Patrick's Day celebrations, a murder is committed and it looks like the evidence points to her new rival. Much as she dislikes him, Lucy is sure he didn't do it. Can she find the real culprit? This story's got a lot of small town charm and eccentric characters, but I've heard it's a little bit maybe on the spicier side, 
So uh, keep that in mind when you check this one out, Irish Parade Murder by Leslie Meyer. And also, I couldn't, I couldn't help but include this one. We actually have, this was one of my favorite TV shows when, when I was younger, uh, when it was on the air. We have a whole bunch of Murder, She Wrote novels here at the Scott County Public Library. So Jessica Fletcher, she was the ultimate in uh, cozy mysteries for TV, and she's also in novel form, so you can check her out here at the Scott County Public Library. And also, uh, you can try to find any of these books on uh, Hoopla if, you're, if you want to download them. And uh, please stay tuned, and we will have a couple of, uh, one or two interviews with um, typical cozy mystery readers. And then uh, next time on Bookends, we will be discussing World War II fiction. So, happy reading. Hi, this is Jessica back again. And as I promised, we've got a special guest with us who really enjoys cozy mysteries. We've got today Miss Jane Marple. She's from a little village called St. Mary Me in England. And she enjoys knitting gardening and gossip. I do, yes I do, and I also love solving crimes. Really? I do, yes. Right. Yes, but you know, I get carried away, but I'm not here to talk about myself. I'm here to talk about three of my very favorite whodunit books. They're so wonderful. The first one here is called The Case of the Counterfeit Eye, and it is by Earl Stanley Gardner. And in The Case of the Counterfeit Eye, Perry Mason is out solving crimes once again. Have you heard of Perry Mason? Oh yes, I love Perry Mason. He's so lovely. He's such a kind man. He has the most beautiful big eyes. Oh, but anyway, <laughs> let me get back on the topic. I get carried away. Um, in this case of the counterfeit eye, you have a lusty wife, an angry embezzler, and one dead businessman. You also have a glass eyeball planted on the crime scene, which makes for a really, really fun novel. Um, this one also is noteworthy because this is the very first Perry Mason book where prosecuting attorney Hamilton Berger is in it. And if you're a fan of the series, you'll know that Berger and Mason kind of become friendly rivals. So it is very interesting. Um, and I love Hamilton Berger. And he has the silliest nickname he goes by, which is Hamburger. <laughs> but it's no wonder he always loses in court. <laughs> And then for the next book, we have this one here called Murder by the Book by Rex Stout, who is also a very prolific mystery writer. In Murder by the Book, it is a Nero Wolf mystery. And Nero Wolf is a very well loved eccentric sleuth. Have you heard of Nero? I've heard of Nero, yes. And everyone loves an eccentric. They do, they do, and he's eccentric, and he always manages to solve the crimes, and he has the most wonderful, wonderful partner, Archie Goodwin, and he's so street savvy and sly, they make a wonderful team. And what is noteworthy about Murder by the Book is there's not one murder for them to solve, but there's several murders. So there's an author who passes away, and he leaves an unpublished tome behind him, and then everyone who reads this unpublished book, they end up dead. And so that's what makes that one very, very exciting. Very definitely, exciting. definitely worth a read, worth a read for sure. Next and finally, last but not least by any means, we have Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express. Do you like Agatha Christie? Oh yes, I love Agatha Christie, Miss Marvel. I know, you know, I really owe her a lot because she created me. <laughs> so I really do love her. But in this book, I, the one downside is I'm not, I don't appear in this book, but that's okay. Uh, my good, good friend, Hercule Poirot, he appears in this book. And in this book, his little gray cells, they're at his very finest. And this is a very, very popular and famous book. Um, it's definitely worth a read. It is a classic. And in it, there is a murdered American business tycoon. And he is murdered brutally inside his train car with the door locked from the inside. 
So it is a very intriguing case. And also with the murder in the Orient Express, you have so many wonderful elements. You have, of course, an exotic setting, a really unique and varied cast, and just a very puzzling murder to solve. And Poirot is probably at his finest in it. So yes, please come by the library and, and check out any of these books. They're all available at the Scott County Public Library in Georgetown, Kentucky. It is, thank you so much for having me here today. And thank you for being on our show, Ms. Mark. It is such a pleasure. You do such wonderful things here. And I love book things. Oh, my thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Ta-ta. Hi, this is Jessica again with the Scott County Public Library Bookend Show. And as I promised, we found uh, uh, in our stacks here a uh, reader of Cozy Mysteries. So um, we've got Mr. C. Hello, thank you very much. He's, he's a retired police officer from, originally from Los Angeles, California. And I understand you have a Basset Hound named Dog. I love my dog, Dog. He is the greatest dog you could ever have. My wife, she loves him most of the time. Okay, so Mr. C, what do you like about Cozy Mysteries? You know, my wife, she loves Cozy Mysteries, and specifically, she loves those Hercule Poirot books. She tells me, you got to go and find these books and read them, and you know what? I can't stop reading them. They're so, they're so wonderful. Um, she made a list for me about the next one I need to get. Let's see. Uh, eggs, milk, size. That's my uh, grocery. I'm gonna take that to the bank later today. I know it's here somewhere. Ah. So yes. So I, I can't keep straight which one is which. So my wife, she gave me this little list. She tells me you gotta go find them at the library. So I came straight down here, and it's the newest Agatha Christie but it's called Halloween Party, a Hercule Poirot mystery. And my wife has told me how much she's just loved it and loved it, and she tells me you gotta go right now and go find it. So is, is this one your favorite, or which one was your favorite? So far, I think this is my wife's favorite. Okay. Uh, my favorite so far has been The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, but this is my wife's favorite, and tw since we're getting closer to Halloween towards the end of this year, I felt like I needed to go and get the rest of them, and this is the one that's coming up. Okay, so what do you like about Hercule Poirot? Well, I think he's just a very, very good detective. Oh, just the best. I love him so much. And my wife, she's crazy about him every night in the bed. She's like, Hercule Poirot this, Hercule Poirot that. He's so funny. And I think he has wonderful mysteries. It's just a wonderful time to read him and kind of go to bed. So I, I guess being a, 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 a retired police officer yourself, that, that you've got um, a lot in common with uh, Hercule Poirot. Oh yeah, I have so much insights I've gathered from reading through his books through the years. Uh, my wife just loves him. Um, and it's interesting to see his unique kind of way of solving mysteries compared to my years in the force. Well, based on what you told me about what you like, in Cozy Mysteries. Uh, I picked out this one that you might want to check out that's in our collection. It's called The Columbo Collection by William Link. What do you think? You know, a Columbo guy sounds like a pretty, like he knows what he's talking about here. Yeah, he's even got a raincoat like yours. You know, raincoats are the best attire you could ever wear. I love mine. All right, check this out. And if you want to uh, check out some more of our cozy mysteries, just pick up one of our bookmarks. They're at the front of the circulation desk. We've got a, a whole bunch of cozy mystery authors right here. And you can find your next one right in our stacks. Thank you very much.